Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Today's t- podcast is going to be focused on uh, complications of HIV. Let's start with some of the gastrointestinal complications. Well, patients can have esophagitis from candida, CMV or HSV with aptus ulcers. Enterocolitis can develop from Salmonella, Shigella, or Giardia and Entamoeba. GI bleeding such as uh, CMV and Kaposi sarcoma. Uh, hepatobiliary causes like hepatitis or AIDS, cholangiopathy can develop. Also nephropathy um, and anemia, thrombocytopenia, all these are causes uh, that can develop as complications. One of the high yield topics that you'll see is uh, enhancing lesion which is typically a sign of toxoplasmosis and toxoplasmo serology will be positive here. Also um, CNS lymphoma with positive CSF PCR for EBV and um, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy with multiple non-enhancing lesions in the white matter that shows a positive CSF PCR for the JC virus is um, another common complication. AIDS dementia in addition to uh, myelopathy or infection, cord compression, um, hypogonadism, adrenal insufficiency, lipodystrophy and metabolic syndrome. Also Kaposi sarcoma with HHV8 can occur at any CD4 count um, which presents with red purple nodular lesions, nodules and infiltrates if with effusions on pulmonary exam. And again um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma um, is another common complication. So as you can see, you know, there's some very high yield complications that you need to be aware of. Um, CMV which will present with retinitis, esophagitis, colitis can be treated with gangcyclovir and MAC which is fever, night sweats, weight loss, hepatosplenomegaly, CD4 count less than 50, clarithromycin plus ethambutol and rifampin are generally the medications of choice. Now let's review some of the other high yield topics you may see on the board exam such as uh, tuberculosis. How do you um, treat tuberculosis? Well for um, you know prophylaxis it basically um, you know depends on the chest x-ray and the PPD. So there's several things you need to look at and have a systematic way of making the diagnosis. Acid fast smear and culture um, are definitely um, very high specificity and sensitivity. So keep in mind that um, you know acid fast smear and culture um, are uh, the two tests that you will definitely want to order for diagnosing uh, TB. The chest X-ray classically shows a fibrocavity in the apical disease. Uh, with reactivation versus middle and lower lobe consolidation in primary TB but uh, distinction um, and HIV positive patients will have uh, non-apical disease so the chest x-ray gives you some clues if it's middle and lower lobe it's consolidation in primary TB if it's apical disease it's probably reactivation Appropriate therapy for prophylaxis in patients with HIV AIDS um, includes things like INH 300 milligrams POQD plus pyridoxine for six to nine months in a likely HIV sensitive patient. HIV positive patients will get INH and pyridoxine for nine months. Contact case INH resistance patients usually get rifampin for four months. And Keep in mind also that monitoring for hepatitis with the amino transferase um, is recommended sometimes for patients who have symptomatic uh, signs. Now for the active TB you want to isolate the patient, use regimens containing multiple drugs and the key here is going to be isoniazide 300 milligrams, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, streptomycin, and knowing the adverse effects is helpful. Isoniazide it causes hepatitis, peripheral neuropathy, lupus-like syndrome. Rifampin causes orange discoloration of urine, hepatitis, GI upset, and hypersensitivity. 
Pyrazinamide causes hepatitis hyperuricemia, and ethambutol causes optic neuritis. Now, anti-tuberculosis regimens include medications like um, INH rifampin plus pyrazinamide um, plus the ethambutol um, in patients with pulmonary TB. And drug-resistant TB patients can usually be treated with an ID consult. So the four combination therapy where you have the INH rifampin pyrazinamide plus the thambutol for two months and then INH plus rifampin for four months is the key medication for treating HIV. Aside from that, the other important facts for HIV I mean for TB that you will need to consider are the size of the reaction. So the size of the reaction in the PPD test results and what does a false positive mean? Well, false positive is basically improper reading, cross reaction with atypicals or a BCG vaccination. And with the booster effect you usually have an increased in duration because uh, immunological boost is provided prior to skin testing in previously sensitized individual. The test goes from negative to positive but does not represent true conversion due to recent infection. Also keep in mind here that um, with clinical manifestations patients presenting with tuberculosis can have um, miliary tuberculosis, which is an acute or insidious onset with wide dissemination characteristically with uh, hematogenous spread in immunocompromised diabetic alcoholic patients. And the constitutional signs of TB include fever, night sweats, weight loss, um, pulmonary disease with small millet seed-like lesions. All these are clues that's going to help you clinch the diagnosis on the board exam. So that was a quick review of some of the high yield points for tuberculosis that you may see on the board exam. One of the other high yield topics can include uh, babesiosis. Quickly we'll review that. And the clinical manifestations here include fevers, myalgias, headache, hemolytic anemia, which is a key sign, um, asplenia, and diagnosis is made with blood smear with intraerythrocyte parasites and uh, PCR. So the blood smear with intraerythrocytic parasites with PCR is the key choice here. Treatment is atovaquone plus azithromycin. And Babesia microti is the one organism that you want to remember. It's transmitted by Ioxidase. And um, so remember the medication name. Atovaquone plus azithromycin or clindamycin plus quinine. Um, now another medica another um, illness you want to know is eric ehrlichiosis, where patients have fever, myalgias, headaches, cough. The key sign here, though, it's going to be the neutropenia and the thrombocytopenia. That's a key laboratory sign for ehrlichiosis. Patients have um, generally, you know, a infection due to ehrlichiosis chaffinis. Um, and the treatment is doxycycline. So that's another high yield um, infection you want to know for the board exam. Now that was a quick review of some of the high yield points in tuberculosis management as well as babesiosis and ehrlichiosis. Please visit complexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. That's www.complexflashcards.com and good luck in your board review.